Uh, so good evening to all of you. Uh, warm welcome for this uh, Sunday evening's uh, consultants meet. Uh, it's been quite some time since we have uh, last conducted our uh, consultants meet. I guess it is almost about more than three months old. So, so this is a virtual meetup and uh, maybe this is an opportunity uh, for all of us to virtually catch up and meet and then uh, invite some experts uh, either from industry or from uh, certification bodies or accreditation bodies. Uh, uh, this is basically the consultants meet is actually to um, create a more knowledge uh, for the consultants about uh, various programs, certification schemes that are available and the global trends, what's happening uh, globally at an international level and a national level. Um, so today uh, um, it is our pleasure to welcome Mr. Ashish Dev uh, from uh, Kotesna Inspection India, Private Limited. Uh, welcome Mr. Dev for today's session. Uh, so today Mr. Dev will be presenting uh, to us about uh, Kotesna Inspections and uh, what do they offer as uh, services at global markets as well as in the international level. Uh, let us um, listen to his uh, presentation uh, and then maybe later on towards the end after the session is over we can have a, uh, a detailed uh, Q&A session also. Uh, so over to you Mr. Dave and you can uh, start the session. Thank you ma'am. Thank you very much. I can okay. also request you to briefly introduce yourself Mr. Dave. Mr. Dave is uh, the lead auditor. Maybe it will help you help us better if you can introduce yourself in detail if you don't mind. Sure definitely. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much ma'am. Okay. Uh, so a month back, almost a month back, okay, I was discussing an idea about a consultant's meet, okay, with Ms. Rema. So she actually uh, suddenly told about this, okay, let's have a session, okay. Uh, let us talk, like, like it, let us take it as a consultant's meet, like, let us talk. So welcome to this presentation. We are going to talk about, as Ms. Rema told, uh, what are the trends, what are the products, and uh, we talked about some of the challenges of him. And it is in my career, like in my, in my, my uh, journey so far, or like I have seen like uh, people become consultants, people become auditors, and uh, they are industry experts. So all are in one food, in fact, actually. So by the time, I mean, like, you know, over the years, okay, I would like to say, they're all changes. Consultant can be an auditor, auditor can be a consultant, and uh, it goes in that way. So I believe like it's a quite professional expert session of um, quality management or the management system professionals. And uh, let us discuss and welcome once again to the presentation. My name is Ashish Dev. I work with Kotekna India Inspections Private Limited, Chennai office. I'm working in the capacity of a lead auditor and tutor. Thank you. And um, I would like to say about you know Chennai Consortium, particularly Ms. Rema. During, I mean, since my college days, for getting updates, okay, I used to follow Ms. Rema. Like, uh, she's, <laughs> she's very, you know, like, uh, a, a, every LinkedIn post, like, you know, is very informative. Even, even, I know there's a lot of team, teamwork also behind Ms. Rema, okay. Thanks, Ms. Rema ji, for this uh, wonderful opportunity. Thanks, everyone from the Chennai Consult Consortium. Moving further, uh, allow me, uh, I'll just, take the presentation and Ramaji, I need your help to confirm is it visible? I'll do that. Uh, your screen sharing actually, you can do the uh, I option. did that. Yeah, it's clear. It's we clear. can see okay. this. Maybe full screen mode, please. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. this is perfect. Yeah, good. Okay. So thank you all of the participants. Okay. So we uh, are on a Sunday evening and um, it's a family time, movie time for many of us, okay? So so thank you all. Okay, thanks my colleagues also from Kotekna. All the experts are here for the, your time, okay? So Kotekna India Inspection Private Lim in Private Limited, okay? So as you see in this slide, we have a global presence, okay? So the, it is founded, Kotekna is founded in 1974 in Switzerland. We have almost like 5,000 plus employees worldwide. And if you see the industries, we are into agriculture, food, minerals and metals, okay? 
um, consumer goods, government and trade solutions. Okay. So when we talk about our services, we are into certification services, inspection, training and technical services, supply chain services and testing. Okay, these are our industries and our services. On the right side, the right corner, you can see we have our global presence in Americas, Europe, Africa, and Middle East and across Asia. On the bottom left, you can see some of the associate, associations or acquisitions. Uh, particularly, I would like to highlight Shiva Labs in Bangalore, the Bimpi Laboratories in uh, UAE. So these all belong to uh, Kodekna. So this is Kodekna, basically. And uh, moving to the next slide, okay. So what we are trying to do, we are trying to do uh, things in a better way, in a different way, okay. So our vision, we strive to recognize as most as the most reliable and customer focused provider for testing, inspection, and verification services in our market, and mission we are determined to build a more efficient service delivery platform to better fulfill our customer need, customers' needs in a continuously changing marketing environment. Okay, so this is our mission and vision. And uh, we, in the last part, past 40 years, okay, of the great achievement, we are now investing and transforming the uh, industry, the company uh, for a continued success in the future. And uh, you can see, we always act with passion, happen, we collaborate with people, we communicate openly, and we are accountable and responsible. So this is the, this is the values we keep and uh, we move further. All right, okay. So when coming to India, okay, you can see uh, on the right corner, the map, okay. We have presence across India, head office is in Mumbai, Branch offices are there in New Delhi, Kolkata, Chennai, Indore, Kantla, Visak, and Orissa. There are operational units across India from Tutikorin to uh, uh, all the Muntra, all these places, okay? So there are 10 laboratories and seven out of that accredited by National Accreditation Board for Laboratories, which is NABL. So this is basically Kotakna, India. Moving to the next slide, okay? So when we talk about the certification and training services, so present service offerings are classified into three, okay? Depends on the market and the market international trends. So for first is a certification. The certification service based on the international, international standards to prove your commitment and compliances, okay? Training services, as the name says, it's a virtual instructor-led or face-to-face -face training sessions on various topics to increase awareness and human capital. Audit services on various standards, including national and international regulatory requirements to evaluate the compliance. And the right corner, you can see some of the very common certifications, 9001, 22716, 22000. We are going to talk further uh, in coming slides, okay? Just a moment here. Yes, moving to the next slide. Okay, so certification services. The first one, integrated management system. We do have the industry's best experts and auditors and uh, who can audit 9,000 audit and certify the clients for ISO 9001 quality management system, 14,001 environmental management system, 45,001 the occupational health and safety management system and ISO 37001, which you know about the anti bribery management system. Okay, so the next one is a pharma a quality assurance programs, okay, for pharmaceutical uh, for the pharmaceutical sector. And uh, we are launching it proudly. Uh, we have different programs like GMP, good manufacturing practice across. Um, like, you know, different guidelines, okay, WHO guidelines or CGMP guidelines or ICH Q7, like International Code of Harmonization Q7 guidelines. Okay, that's the first one. Se second one, when we talk about ph pharmaceutical packaging, we do certify, the, we do audit the client and provide value addition for P as per the PS 9000 standard and ISO 15738 2017 version of the standard, which is mostly the packaging standards for the pharmaceutical industry. Logistics, we 
वहां पे एक्सपर्ट क्यू कैन सर्टिफाई डब्ल्यू एच और जी डी पी गुड डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन प्रैक्टिस एंड गुड स्टोरेज प्रैक्टिस सो दिस कम्स दिस प्रोडक्ट कम्स इन द फार्मास्यूटिकल क्वालिटी एश्योरेंस एक्सक्यूज मी फॉर एश्योरेंस प्रोग्राम नाउ वेन वी टॉक अबाउट फॉरेस्ट्री वी हैव ए वंडरफुल सीरीज ऑफ क्लाइंट अक्रॉस द ग्लॉब एंड वी हैव एक्सपर्ट वी कैन सर्टिफाई the forest worship council certificate of custody okay the fsc coc programs and cosmetics there is a iso 22716 certification programs we can offer and uh, we do have also wonderful very prestigious clients also in this sector sustainability i would like to start with trusty trusty is a wonderful program like uh, where the uh, plantations are getting certified okay and uh, Uh, we proudly present this program there are a lot of clients for us and the next one is issc iscc eu and plus okay moving ahead okay sector specific we have uh, global aquaculture uh, so bap program asc and msc coc certificate chain of custody program and asc farm program then food safety we we have codex based gmp and hasap and uh, fssc 22000 IFS food and ISO twenty two thousand. Okay, so these programs are very well known and uh, people know it. So I am not going in detail. Any questions? Please feel free to comment on the chat box. Okay, the experts are available. We can answer to that particular question. Okay, and uh, in across across India. Okay, across the uh, this region. Okay, Sri Lanka uh, and all. We have lot of clients in this sector and. Uh, we have a very very um, experienced auditors also who handle this particular programs okay so when we talk about feed safety we have gmp plus fsa food safety program is there okay so again uh, this is also one of our prestigious programs and the technical and auditing experts are available with codex now okay now when we talk about the training services okay we have uh, hasap Twenty-two thousand FSC, twenty-two thousand IFC, and British Retail Consortium BRC GS for food lead auditor program available. And when we talk on the food safety, other topics uh, understand understanding the food safety culture, zoning concept and environment monitoring program, understanding the food fraud and food defense program, allergen and allergen management in the food industries, postdoc all type of courses, regulatory updates FSSA, PCQI human food. so these uh, training services are available and uh, we used to get wonderful response from the uh, clients like if our 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 customers like uh, our training trainers are uh, very very practical and uh, very uh, they are industry experts they were industry experts so they they can always link the programs to the uh, what actual day to day scenarios with the regular business um, across this sector and we do have a laboratory management system training iso 17025 internal auditor and implementation management system training we wonderful programs like uh, in iso 9000 14000 and 45000 i want to emphasize here uh, we do have training for sa 8000 social compliance or all, all this and uh, we do have experts for this sector also then some of the general programs like operating procedures for covid 19 kira hazard identification risk assessment disaster manage emergency response and disaster management plan erdmp implementing fires for a safe and healthy workplace training on various labor laws in india and uh, when we come to the pharma sector okay we have train we have trainings for gmp good manufacturing practices good distribution good storage practices packaging trials data and integrity kappa corrective and preventive action particularly on a pharmaceutical uh, sector on a scenario okay deviation management and validations particularly cleaning validations okay so these are our training programs moving ahead audit services so what is the difference between a certification services and audit services so certification services like after the audit we will be issuing one certificate so audit services like um, we will be auditing and uh, not necessary certificate shall be is, uh, issued okay so particularly like gap assessments okay so uh, it could be 
for on a, on all food safety standards or any management system standards including social and sustainable standards and customized assessment like uh, second party checklist based audits or supplier evaluations and uh, when we talk about when we talk about fssa audits all the mandatory fssa audits hygiene rating eat right campus street food vendor audits okay so and the uh, international regulatory compliances like on usda fsma requirements and any other country specific regulations we specific regulations we can do the audit services and uh, some other general programs wash and cash fire safety audits she safety health and environment audit social compliances audit etc and uh, when we talk about the pharmaceutical sector we can do internal audits like our experts can come there and do the internal audits on behalf of them and it is always good because it is a, a outside perspective that makes the things looks in a different manner and uh, we can do supplier audits like uh, uh, all this for the supplier qualification and service uh, performance verification we can do uh, this service for the com companies as well so moving ahead okay uh, some of the credentials okay we are accredited by nabcp okay for the qms ems or oshas or, or like ohsms okay fsms fssc and uh, for the product certifications as well then i'll just read out ifs approved certification body we are an ifs approved certification body we are fssc for stack and t board india approved certification body trustee approved certification body we are also a apda recognized fsms certification agency uh, we are a gmp and fsa approved cp issc recognized cp and fssa recognized auditing agency on the right side you can see some of the logos uh, from the uh, issued by the accreditation body okay so going uh, going further some of the prestigious clients so i'll just leave a moment here uh, here to so you can see huftamaki and uh, many prestigious clients here who are uh, asso associated with us uh, since many years okay now uh, you can follow us you can see the updates in the social media we do have uh, updates in we do update in linkedin uh, facebook uh, contact our group itself and uh, twitter as well okay so this is the first part of the presentation okay uh, so here we we are we we would like to introduce ourselves our services our offering our expertise to you okay mm. and uh, for any contacts you know you can see on the right uh, bottom center india certification at kotekna.co.in that is our email id that is common email id so any query please send to us india certification at kodakna.co.in thank you very much now i move to the second part of the presentation yeah so first i will Okay, give me a moment. Okay, stop share. Yep. Then turn on the second presentation. Just be with me. Here we go. So, Ms. Rema, I need your help once again. Yeah. You can share the screen. Share. Yes. yes. Is it yeah, very clear. good? It's clear. Uh, full screen mode, it's clear. Thank you. I think it's good now. Perfect. Okay. So, uh, so, second part of this presentation. Okay. So, in the beginning, I was telling about like auditors are consultants, consultants are audit industry experts. Okay. So it is like, you know, like some of these challenges, okay. 
we as a team, like inside Kodakna, we discussed, okay, what are the challenges we face during the audit, okay? So we thought like, you know, let us discuss with the, the experts, okay, this, during the consultants meet. And um, of course, consultants are the key who prepare, prepare the clients, okay? So if this is something of any help to the, to the experts, the expert consultants, okay? So let us take it further, okay? That's the idea. We just come up with some of these bullet points, okay? The first one, if you see, okay, IAF MD 22, it talks about interviewing the doctors and medical practitioners during the audit, okay? So is it really challenging? Why? Because when we talk about a small company, we used to audit some companies like 10, 10 people or five people company. The boss, the owner of the com company is the marketing person, he's a quality person, he's sales person. And uh, when we talk about, you know, like in, bring the doctors also for the audit, okay? We have to interview them, it's a challenge. Definitely it's a challenge, okay? But well, on the other, other side, okay, it is a requirement also. IFMD 22, it insists like during the audit, medical practitioners have to be interviewed. So there is no one-stop solution for this right now during this meeting, but let us brainstorm it after this also. And um, so what we are planning, we are just planning to send it, uh, communicate to the client, via audit plan itself, so they can do some arrangements means it is really good, okay? The second one, proper health checkup for the employees. Not only for the safety, health and safety audits, for the food audits, there are like sector specific or job specific requirements. So, so when we talk about a me medical checkup, around 300 employees, all are given a chest X-ray. What is the purpose of that, okay? So nobody will accept that. So any, any expert, medical expert has to recommend, depends on the job or the what is that uh, field that person is working and particularly that has to be uh, reviewed, okay? So this is a very big challenge during the audit. <clears throat> Second one, life cycle perspective. When we talk about the 14,000 one, life cycle perspective, uh, Mostly we see operational, like, you know, during the production or manufacturing process, what are the environmental impacts? But we know, we all know 14,001, it is very specific about life cycle and it talks from the birth to the death of the product. Okay, so what are the environmental impacts during the purchase of a raw material? Okay, what is the end of life treatment for the product? So these things are, can, seems to be a, gray area many times okay second one uh, the third one sorry okay the con concept of integrated management system well we all know when we calculate the audit time okay when we ask for the iaf regulations so we can take some reductions and all and ask for the prog iaf guidelines for the integrated management system some Relaxation is there, 10 percent, 20 percent, whatever it is, as per the guidelines. But during the audit, when we come and uh, audit the people, so when we asked about uh, safety to a particular quality person, he is going to say, I don't know about that. Then the uh, accreditation body assessors or anybody who sits also witness the audit will be looking into us. Where is the integrated management system? Okay. So this is the challenge here. Okay concept like opportunity in the risk management. Risk and opportunity register, risk is there, but opportunity is not there. And opportunity can be anything, like uh, it could be an improvement, it's a continual improvement. So this kind of, uh, this kind of, I, this kind of, uh, you know, like a, a particular scenario is a really challenging during the audit. The fifth one, 45,000 insist on non-managerial involvement of the non-managerial workers, okay. So the organization is, uh, you know, like many times they, we have seen, you know, like they face it, they found it very difficult to demonstrate it, okay. And uh, this is really an, an, a challenging like a part and particularly the workers committee, the involvement of the workers committee, how do they involve 
uh, a non managerial worker during an incident investigation such type of uh, such type of things you know is always uh, challenging and uh, companies we found it very difficult to uh, demonstrate number 6 still it's a supplier evaluation many cases but you know like uh, service providers especially uh, food trucks food sectors and all you know or you know like uh, when they transport the good okay the service providers the transportation logistic service providers are all very important but most times you know like uh, uh, it is like a supplier evaluation who is a raw material supplier service providers are not getting uh, approved or evaluated same goes to like uh, the hsc criteria it will be a 9 1445 integrated audit so no criteria with reference to health safety or environment will be there this is also really challenging okay and uh, we know the first part of the standard talks about identifying the legal requirements the last part it talks about compliance evaluation part so everyone is having a legal register but when we talk about the legal eva the compliance evaluation part people are getting stuck and uh, as i explained during the ims audit a uh, ems part will be in, ignored uh, ignored actually is ignored many times okay uh, uh, mostly it is focusing on the safety and uh, the emergency scenarios it's almost like fire all the time but there are lot of other scenarios which could happen like a spillage or uh, there are other aspects also but you know like uh, mostly it is considered fire so this could be uh, improved okay review of the documents hazard identification and uh, risk register or environmental aspect impact register normally companies make this and uh, over the time uh, they they you know like uh, they fail to review it or you know document the dates and all will not be properly updated many times okay monitoring and review of the qhsc objectives everyone shows one objectives couple of objectives okay but where is the monitoring part of it how is the what is the planning for that whether action towards achievement if it is not getting achieved what are the action plans okay so if it is achieved what is the next level so such kind of things the next next level of the setting the objectives and take it further it's always a challenging part okay moving to the next slide design the validation part the standard talks about design and production validation we know when we or when we ask them when we request them mostly people will give the qc test quality control test results okay but validation is we all know validation like uh, will be take a, a tire means when validate the tire means they do the destruction test and or running on the road test and something like that okay for is an easy example for common classic example but uh, this concept the validation concept it's always a tough part for the uh, many organization concept of contractor and outsourced activity is always a uh, challenging outsourced activity uh, uh, one classic example when we talk about uh, do you have an outsourced activity to the clients they always used to say yes calibration service do calibration service is an outsourced activity i am not going to conclude anything now okay so these are some questions okay for the brainstorming further all right financial risk and it related risk in the manufacturing sectors um, is not you know like considered during the risk analysis so we all know many most of the companies are getting operated through the erp system so if something fails there something fails at the it level what will happen that is so that is many times we have not seen financial risk is also very important okay uh, and uh, for overall budgeting and the product ensuring a quality product so this also a challenge and uh, when we talk about uh, some sector specific knowledge of the country specific regulation let's say manufacturer is import importing from here from particularly food sector importing to uh, importing to a an outside country so it the the rules there insist the manufacturer has to ensure the country specific regulations so this is really a challenge for many companies okay 
and lack of the technical update, particularly in the food sector. And again, declaration of the conformity for food contact material and uh, a proper testing by an approved laboratory without that none of the uh, uh, none of the outside companies uh, accept this okay so it is very much important so this is uh, also many times we uh, we see uh, uh, lagging many cases okay so we uh, overall you know like we just thought like let us discuss this 15 points with the experts, okay. Uh, as I said, you know, there is no, uh, it's not like a one-stop solution, but you know, like I will be conscious in my audits in future. So, so whoever plays that role, when I become a consultant, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> I'll be very conscious, okay, as I said. So, so these are, these, these are the 15 uh, points, okay. So any questions now? Uh, Thank you very much. Okay, again, I would like to say, I will be sharing this, we will be sharing this presentation um, to you through Ms. Rema. So we will be sending you these presentations and uh, further uh, over to you, Ms. Rema. Now, uh, yeah, this is you. our two slides. Let me stop sharing. Maybe we can just leave it for uh, them to okay. jot down. Maybe we can share it with them later. They can also yeah. note down. So thank you so much for the wonderful uh, presentations, uh, the part one as well as the part two. Part one itself is um, pretty insightful uh, even for us, like uh, looking at some of those uh, service offerings or the product offerings that you have. Maybe we would like to touch upon a little on those aspects also. And, uh, uh, the FAQs part is um, is equally interesting because uh, we come across, uh, even as consultants, uh, same old challenges or uh, similar issues. And uh, there are various reasons. The root causes can be uh, anything. And uh, we, we can go on discussing and debating and all this. Maybe we will just um, uh, wait for the audience uh, to come across, I mean, to come out with their uh, uh, queries. I have seen some uh, queries in the chat box and uh, then maybe we can actually um, keep the session open. Uh, anybody interested in asking a question, we can uh, request uh, you to unmute uh, yourself and then uh, I think you can do it. If you have any difficulty, just uh, raise your hand. I will also do it. You can ask the questions and uh, there are a couple of questions in the chat box. Uh, this one yeah, from Mishraji. Yeah. Maybe I'll just read out the one in the chat box and then later request um, uh, the participants also to drop in their questions. Mishraji wants to know, is there any legal requirement or uh, any uh, specific ISO standard requirement for plantation audit? Okay. Uh, I request Mr. Sumit in this call. Sumit. Uh, there, I guess. Can, can, can they unmute themselves? Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, Sumit. So it depends. Uh, it depends on the sector. Like if we are, if we are considering like uh, plantation, maybe the cultivation part uh, under the food safety certification, uh, then uh, definitely ISO twenty two thousand uh, covers the same. Uh, it covers the entire uh, entire food chain and. Uh, uh, applicable legal requirement uh, as such uh, there is no except a uh, few of the PPC codes like plant protection codes where specific pesticides uh, have been assigned by by some of the sector specific uh, uh, regulatory authority for example T board uh, oh, they have uh, specified this trusty code where they have specified what are the uh, pesticides uh, can be allowed in tea plantation. Similarly, it is also available for the other industries as well. So the auditor as well as the consultant, they should have the knowledge of that and the organization uh, like uh, the organization uh, which is going for the certification uh, they have to uh, like uh, comply with these. 
in addition to that like uh, there is a standard called uh, forestry uh, fsccoc forestry chain of custody so for that uh, there may be some of the specific requirements are there so uh, that I not the subject expert, so maybe, or uh, we will we will let you know maybe uh, within few days in case uh, we have other updates on this. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. There is an update, I guess, Mr. Sanjay Goshal has shared a nice an publication. Um, it is one double zero four one two ISO for agri related there is a, uh, a document uploaded in the chat box a request uh, mishraji you can also refer that we do have uh, mr uh, anil jauri sir raising your hand sir you you are unable to unmute yourself no i think uh, yeah, yeah, are you can. are you able to hear me now yes yes sir yeah <clears throat> so thanks thanks for the presentation it helps to know what a certification body is offering in the market uh, for people like us uh, who are sitting in some kind of consulting or advisory position and uh, so thanks for that presentation but i have two questions uh, to ask uh, slightly aggressive you might find uh, for you a why is kotekna uh, undertaking certification to guidance standards which is not acceptable we know in the market whether it's course codex asap or gmp or whatever so why is Kodekna not uh, you know, resisting from this? I know many certification bodies are doing. I also know, and I won't name the certification body, that there are manufacturers in India who got certification to HACCP, so-called Codex HACCP. Then they are produced to Thailand twice, I'm aware, because it came to me as CEO of NABCB. And the certificates were rejected in Thailand. So why is why would a consultant, I mean, my question is to both, why would a consultant advise any client to go for a certificate which may not be acceptable internationally? And why would a certification body engage in any certification which may risk his client facing the situation that, as I said, twice um, two different manufacturers faced in Thailand, that their certificates from a multinational like you um, were rejected on the ground that they were not accredited certificate, when they came back to me and asked, can you accredit or endorse these certificates? I said, no, Codex HACCP is not certifiable and therefore these certificates cannot be endorsed. Uh, IAF has passed a resolution very clearly barring all accreditation bodies from accrediting any uh, certification service which is based on guidance standards. So my first question to you is, given that you are a multinational, a very respected uh, company, why should I have never understood why should such companies engage in uh, certification to guidance standards, which obviously is technically not correct, number one. Number two, I also believe that once you are offering a service, I mean, when I was head of a certification body, which is BIS, I was head, I retired as, I left BIS when I was head of management system certification. My first point to my management was, I will not offer an unaccredited service. Every service of mine should be accredited. So again, my question to you is, why are you offering so many unaccredited services, uh, which somewhere do not bring complete value to the client because when he shows this certificate somewhere abroad, he may not always find acceptance. Okay. So two questions so, for you, thank you. Yeah, right. Thank you very much, sir. Like, um, us, uh, you also like we, we used to follow you up all the LinkedIn updates and all you know like with due respect can you can you specify which is that particular program because Kodekna you know like we do the audit services also we may not issue a certificate we don't issue a certificate for that okay this is like an audit services okay so what is that particular standard which you are referring to so I can just um, you know, directly to that expert. Can you please tell me that, sir? Sir, so I was talking about, I guess, uh, uh, GMP. Uh, there was something in your pharma um, quality assurance, uh, GMP programs, and a couple of others are also there, listed there. Yeah, GMP, pharma quality assurance, we all know uh, the certificate 
Kodakna, whatever the Kodakna issued a certificate, it's not. Not only Kodakna, any CB issued a certificate for GMP is not valid. It's not legally valid. That is very straightforward. So what we are doing, we are, sub so if you see the whole program, the US FDA program, so there is a, or, you know, like the, the drug, drug and regulatory. Yes. Okay. Yes. There is a, there is a clause stating like, you know, this could be used as an internal audit. Okay. Or this could be used as, this is, this certificate is not at all legally valid. Okay. It is very clearly mentioned in our issue. Okay. In our uh, certificate as well. And uh, the country, the legal certificate issued by the Drug Control General of India. And uh, this is an audit services particularly. Once again, I'm just trying to unmute. Uh, you're actually unmuted, sir. Any difficulty in unmuting, sir? Jari, sir? Yeah. Yes, no. now I'm able to. Uh, uh, right. Yeah. No, the issue is not legal validity. You are taking the discussion elsewhere. The issue is, even if you say audit service, I mean, we know as professionals, audit has to be against a criteria, a criteria document. Yep. Guidance documents are not criteria documents. So even if you say it's an audit service, to me, it's unacceptable because it's not a criteria. It's a guidance. Guidance is not criteria. Okay. So the question revolves around why either you do certification and guidance standard, which is Codex as for example, or cosmetics, because this issue was raised even in IAF on this cosmetics uh, standard, 22 something, there is a standard. 22716. Yeah. So uh, the question is about both audit and this service, whether certification or audit, we all know as professionals, we have been taught this for audit, there has to be a criteria for, um, for um, certification, there has to be criteria. Guidance documents are not criteria. So to me, this is fundamentally wrong. Now, if <clears throat> somebody is looking, I mean, I gave a solution. Uh, that you convert the criteria document into a checklist and you certify uh, audit against the checklist and you tell the client that this checklist is based on then don't claim that you are certifying to 15738 15738 is a certifiable standard of course you are certifying to codex as or codex gmp or you are auditing to codex as or uh, codex gmp then say that you are auditing to a criteria which is your checklist which is based on codex codex as yes make that claim but to say in a certificate that you are certified to Codex ASAP, that is not correct. And that's not giving client complete value also. So, yes. so to me, that's, that's something, I mean, I can imagine a small time CB engaging in all kinds of things to gain some business, but I do not expect the Kotechnas and the SGS of the world to engage in this kind of service, which is not A, technically correct, B, uh, does not provide the client complete value for his money. He doesn't know. The clients do not know this, these, these kind of niceties. They think, oh, I got ASAP certification. Now I can go around the world claiming I'm ASAP certified. And then he suddenly discovers that in a particular country, certificate is rejected. And they are told, please go to your accreditation body and get this certificate endorsed by them. And then they yeah. come to me and I tell them, I'm sorry, I can't endorse because there can be no certificate against Codex ASAP. Yeah. So that's my question. Sure, sir. I mean, uh, this is a, a, a bigger, bigger question. I don't think I expect you to answer and give me a solution there, but I certainly want you to think about this, raise it internally, that yeah. why does a certification body of the stature of Patekna need to um, engage in services which are technically not correct and which may not bring complete value to their clients. Uh, number two, yeah. it is Sorry, possible point, point to use taken. guidance Just standards. Study. It is possible to use guidance standards by converting them into a normative document, by converting them into checklists telling your clients that please comply with this checklist okay. and I'll audit you against this checklist. This checklist is based on Codex ASAP or on XYZ standard. Say all that. Sure. So that that distinction is sure, clear sure. that you're not certifying to yeah. or auditing against X document, but you're auditing against a normative document that you have produced based on that document. Sure. Point okay. well taken. Point well taken. I request my colleague, Mr. Sanjay. He has raised his yeah. hand. Okay. Yes. So there is something he, we can let us hear from him as well. Just Mr. check Sanjay? with him whether he is able to unmute, unmute himself because we have unmuted everybody. Sanjay, yeah. Can you unmute you? Yep. Here we go. Oh, he's still muted. 
Mr. Sanjay? Uh, uh, yes, I, I can unmute myself, yes. madam. Right. But uh, uh, I think Sumit, Sumit would uh, uh, answer uh, uh, to uh, Anil sir. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe after that, I just wanted to so, continue with Anil sir's question also. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, uh, thanks, uh, Anil, your value in so, Minji, your voice is floating. It is not clear, please. It's cracking. So, Sumit, we cannot the hear you. Sumit, can you repeat, please? You are not audible also, um, Sumit uh, Ji. Hello, am I audible now? Yeah, yeah. better. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm having a, a very limited net connectivity. I'm out of India, actually. Okay. So the, the point is that there are very few organizations. Uh, they uh, do not afford uh, accredited uh, certificate or implementation of, uh, of GFSI recognized certificate, especially for food industry at the beginning. So the intention is that to develop them for at least something where where a system is implemented they should start with something and definitely i fully agree that it is a guideline the entire guideline says that they should do this they should do this rather than uh, there is no requirement of shell considering the fact that this is not a standard, this is a guideline. So intention is to develop themselves and we actually carry out the audit based on a checklist. And if you see the copy of the certificate, uh, there we also clearly mention that the organization is complying to the codex as a guideline. So only thing is your point is very taken. It's a valuable input. Rather than issuing a certificate, we can we can think of uh, issuing issuing a uh, confirmation letter stating that the organization is confirming to the codex guideline and uh, the audit has been carried out against the check which have been developed uh, based on uh, codex as a guideline. That probably will uh, give uh, further clarity on this. Yes, I, I would say that, that you make it clear that you have developed a checklist based on codex as a standard and you are auditing against that checklist and you are issuing whatever against that checklist, which is a normative, which is a requirement kind of document, which is a normative document. Yes. Yeah. And Sorry. Yeah, and to answer your second part, sir, yeah. we openly talk to the client, okay, there will not be any confusion to our clients, like, um, like this, they will not be in a position like, you know, like this is a certificate and it will fail in a different country. So when we issue, as my colleague said, okay, is a letter of conformity and we openly discuss the same with the client as well. Your point well taken and it is a huge input for us. Thank you very much. This is, uh, this is an issue which is uh, coming up uh, often at the marketplace and especially in regulated uh, sectors like uh, food sector, uh, the pharmaceutical sector, or even the cosmetics, uh, the, the ones which um, Jory sir also has listed, all regulated sectors. Regulator has got a specification on the QMS and then importing countries, as you also know, global markets, each country has got its own uh, uh, regulator's uh, specification. There is a confusion at the marketplace on this certificate of compliance because uh, the same industry uh, is uh, saying in the industry forums that uh, they are not aware that uh, this is a... Uh, uh, what is the difference? What what do you mean by a certificate of uh, compliance? So they throw back this question back to us. And what do you mean by this? Are you trying to tell us that this is not a, a valid certificate or this is not a, in, a, with reference to a particular standard? Um, see, as a con conformity assessment uh, teams uh, sitting on the other side of the table, yes, you may know the distinction very well, but not on the uh, receiving end or uh, when they present this to uh, uh, third parties, uh, when they are part of the supply chain or a part of vendor evaluation process, you know, when they are part of the supply chain to a particular industry or whatever it is, when they submit it, you know, 
um, um, rejections are happening. So it is um, better to have uh, come some kind of, uh, bring some kind of a clarity because we are also battling with all these questions because uh, to see the websites claim uh, the generally certifications as uh, servers mentioning, there's, a, there's no classification, but as consultants, we keep classifying class A, class B, class C, class D, and it can even go up to class Z uh, looking at the profiles nowadays. <laughs> So we also go visit the website, they certificate, um, certif we are certifying and certi but those are not certificate, they're only compliances. So some um, clarity, yes, you can do an audit or whatever it is, but ultimately it is the process, the problem is with the certificate, uh, which is being issued, you know, uh, however we try to design right, it and uh, dif some uh, differentiators are definitely required, see it will those things will be uh, respected Absolutely. and valued by the industry also because they are extremely uh, ignorant that yeah. is also so, there and uh, see at uh, the end of the day all of us are here only to add some value to their exactly. business processes and ensure that you know they maintain very strong checks and balances internally yeah. and that's all it is and uh, we let, have, me, uh, let me uh, Rama, yes, let me rama let me try to clarify yes sir uh, certification we all understand the, the issue of certification that three years and five years or surveillances, et cetera, et cetera. We all understand that. Uh, in inspection, actually, mm -hmm. uh, in the inspection standard 1720, there is a mention of issuing an inspection report or issuing an inspection certificate. Now, inspection report would be expected to be a detailed one, which gives the whatever was inspected, what are the parameters, et cetera, et cetera. Inspection report could be simply a statement saying that X, Y, Z product or process or whatever was inspected and it complies with the requirements of X, Y, again, so and so, and it, it complies with the requirements. So what is inspection certificate in 1720, mentioned as inspection certificate, is becoming in the marketplace as certificate of compliance. You do an inspection, you issue a certificate that he complies with so and so. You may not, the checklist is the report. At the back end of that certificate will be a inspection report or a checklist where you would have collected all the evidences etc so that is what is becoming um, in the market as certificate of compliance that you do a one-time audit say that yes he complies it's like test report you know lab testing now lab testing can have all the details and that the client can also ask that you please certify whether it's complying or not complying lab is supposed to give only values usually not give a conclusion but the client can ask that lab should give a conclusion at the end. So if the conclusion is given separately from the values, it will be a, just a certificate that yes, we have tested X, Y, Z product as per standard so and so, and it complies with the requirements. So in, in inspection standard, there is indeed a mention of an inspection report and inspection certificate, and both are different and that, that difference has been explained. So now if I do a, now if I do a one-time audit or inspection, so at the end of the day, I can issue a detailed inspection report or an audit report, or I can also, as per 1720, issue a certificate simply saying that I inspected or audited X, Y, Z as per ABC, and it is in compliance. That's the that's thing. You're right, sir. Absolutely. Point well taken. Any other questions? Um... Anybody else would like to ask? There is, there is one question uh, huh. in the chat box. Huh. Do you, you can I read that? Yeah, please. Which one? Okay. That Cotecna FSC COC certification. Yeah, that is Cotecna FSC COC certification are having controlled wood category. So yeah. the expert is here, Mr. Kamlesh. Okay. So please respond. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. So good evening to everyone there. Yes. Uh, my name is Kamlesh. Uh, we don't have at this moment control wood under the scope of certification. At this moment, we are only conducting audits against chain of custody. Okay. And anything else uh, you want to know about this in detail? Uh, that you answered the question, Kamlesh. Thank you very much. Yes. So control wood basically is 40005 standard. That is not in our scope at this moment. We only do the chain of custody audits. Thank you. Thank you, Kamlesh. So that's all I am seeing in the chat box. No uh, more questions. Yeah, not many uh, questions. Anybody else would like to ask? You can also unmute yourself, please.
if there are no questions, I would like to maybe uh, give some uh, request to you, some topics where we, we can also explore uh, doing some joint programs with the industry. Uh, because okay. some of this, because you know, the cosmetics also in the, um, in the Indian scenario, we have some new cosmetic rules also, the regulations also have been revised. Uh, and then uh, especially the, the GDP, GSP and all in pharmaceutical industry, of course, uh, we have lots of documents, WHO documents, whatever it is, more and more, uh, some uh, educational sessions uh, to the industry also needed uh, for especially on GDP, GSP and all this. Yeah. Uh, and then on the cleaning validations. And these are all the topics are of uh, greater interest, even otherwise, uh, any time of the uh, a year. Yeah, and also, we would like to have um, some specific sessions. We will uh, reach out to you for uh, assistance on Eat Right Campus uh, for sectors like um, healthcare. Sure hospitals and all, right? Yes, uh, yes. We are also seeing uh, that uh, now the hospitals are showing interest uh, to declare that their facility has a uh, eat right uh, campus and even the uh, industries, other industries, manufacturer uh, units where they have uh, uh, a canteen facility or a food preparation facility or even, uh, even otherwise, we would like to have some sessions on this eat right campus. We will organize some exclusive sessions through the industry platforms. Uh, through industry associations and uh, chambers. Uh, we would request uh, you all to come forward and uh, join hands with us. And then um, MCR uh, focus of CCC is uh, industry education, uh, right. imparting uh, all this uh, information to the industry at uh, frequent intervals. And uh, that is how it is. And otherwise, uh, uh, we are a not-for-profit organization. We have no commercial interest. We don't do any yeah. commercial programs or uh, trainings also. Uh, some of this I have just uh, listed because these are all the things even otherwise uh, required. And uh, even your question on uh, OHSMS audits, interviewing doctors and medical practitioners, um, there are some challenges. That's a very interesting one, maybe. We also can uh, have a discussion because when OSH code is going to be uh, implemented, at least okay. uh, it's going to be implemented from April is what, uh, yeah. uh, it's, there's a forecast when the OSH code is going to be implemented and uh, this issue is going to throw up uh, yeah, all the time. Definitely. So yeah. there are, there are um, uh, methodologies and mechanisms which we can also discuss and debate and see because yeah. without uh, uh, bringing them into focus, uh, the workplace health and safety is of no relevance. Um, okay. So those things also yeah. we need to address and uh, discuss. Definitely. Uh, so we have taken a note already and anytime um, we are always there, like uh, any of the specifics, you know, like uh, topics. So these are whatever you have listed listed we take it not we discuss inside our platform and uh, we definitely would like to associate with the ccc and uh, the industry further thank you very much for this opportunity thanks on behalf of the protector the yeah. team and thank you all participants thank you very much over to you yeah. thank you thank you thank you so much uh, for the wonderful uh, presentation once again and uh, to all the consultants who could make it on a sunday evening uh, and normally we always see the trend uh, Registrations to participation is always 50%, but they will all watch YouTube later. <laughs> the moment it gets uploaded, you know, they all watch YouTube so that, you know, that their convenience, they would like to. Um, and that's what we are seeing. Uh, YouTube participation is also high. And uh, at the end of the day, it's learning that matters and uh, how it is done. It's a uh, different uh, this thing. But anyhow, thanks so much to all the participants. Um, uh, CCC doesn't need an introduction. Almost all the consultants, everybody knows about uh, CCC. Let us keep doing some of this um, knowledge sessions for the consultants also, because we also need to learn so much. Uh, we both learn from each other and uh, maybe once in a quarter, please uh, roll out some specific sessions like this. Short sessions, one, one hour, uh, that's all it is, short capsules. Or share us some recordings if you have any um, audios or videos or whatever it is. Uh, keep informing us, uh, updating us about your programs and events. We will circulate this to the industry regularly. We will upload in our post uh, portal also. CCC has got a good website, which has got a good yeah. followers. We will upload and we will also circulate it. Whoever is interested in the industry, they can also pick up. So thank you so much. Thanks to all the consultants uh, who have uh, taken uh, time on a particular, uh, I mean, especially on a Sunday evening to join us. So we'll keep inviting you for the regular sessions. And uh, so at least let's uh, make it a habit to meet once in a month. And this is a... Uh, this is uh, used to be our pattern, but then somehow we have uh, 
let go of it and then we will just get back to the routine. So thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for knowledge sharing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Sir.